It's time, younger fans. I'm Taylor Strecker, and this is the only place to be for an inside look at every week's new episode of Younger. Welcome to your Getting Younger After Show. Tonight, we have three of the show's stars here to break down the episode with me. Charles Michael Davis, Miriam Shore, and Peter Herman. And FYI, Miriam not only plays Diana Trout, but also directed this episode, making it her second time as a director on Younger. So fab, girl. Oh, Round so of applause and welcome, guys. Thanks, thanks for having me. Hello, hello. No, you were great. Aww. Here's... Thanks for that. <laughs> yeah, I gave him 20 bucks. So and while you're watching, we'd love you to get in on the action and the conversation by sharing your thoughts on tonight's episode in the comment section. Okie doke. So, Miss Thang, Ms. first Thang. things first. Miriam, tell us about directing your second episode of Younger. It was amazing. It was, it, it's, I love it. I had a great time the first time, and it was challenging and difficult and wonderful and um, in all the greatest of ways difficult. And uh, it was very different from the last episode I directed, so I'm really happy they let me do it again. How did it differ from the first time around? Well, the first time around, there were I had several big parties I was shooting. I was shooting outside in Bryant Park in the middle of the night. Mm -hmm. I was, you know, there was a lot of sort of like large things that I had to kind of corral. And this one was much more intimate and was much more about interpersonal relationships and, and the the humor from that as opposed to from literally slipping and falling which happened in my last episode yes it did so just trying to figure out you know how to tell that story it was, it was good it was it was fun to try to put that puzzle together also how do you direct yourself yeah, it's horrible <laughs> i'm a horrible horrible actress to direct i've discovered no i don't that's really hard especially how do you direct yourself like clomping back and forth and 65 pounds of jewelry and heels and like to the monitor like look and then clomp back and be like okay action and you know it's <laughs> It's trying and challenging. I think I'd prefer not to have to be in the scene, mm -hmm. but you do get an interesting perspective in the scene that you wouldn't get as a director otherwise when you're right here, you know? And speaking of which, how was it to be directed by Miriam? Guys. Guys. Um, it was great. It was, it was great. It was great. It was at 20 bucks. <laughs> I, um, last year when Miriam directed her first episode, uh, Sutton and I were in her very first scene. Right. Um, and. In the first shot of the first scene, uh, you know, called action and cut, and then came over and gave Sutton a note and gave me a note. You know immediately someone who knows how to talk to actors, and that's such a gift. And she's great with story, and she's great with picture. But for the actor, there is uh, there's such a relief when uh, I mean we already know that you're one of us. But would also have been possible that that would have gone away yeah, as a director, right? That actors who direct who don't really know how to talk to their fellow actors, yeah. and you really do, and you just know it immediately, yeah. and you're you're the best, the best. Mm -hmm. it, it, so it's, it's it's it was I was so worried about that. I wanted them to feel like I was communicating well and I was able to help in any way. Not that they need a ton of help, because look, we're in season six at this point, too, that you guys know your characters better than anyone. Mm -hmm. And you know what you're doing, and it's beautiful. So my, I felt like my job sort of get out of the way. But any time the story needed to be clearer, or, you know, that would be when I would come in and give a note. But I was so worried that it wouldn't go well. I wanted them to trust me and to believe in me and to, to you know. And then it went so beautifully, and, and then again this year, you know. I, I, I'm really lucky. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. Who gives you the hardest time? Oh, fucking Miriam Shore. <laughs> oh, yeah. That diva. Yeah, I heard about her. That mm. diva. That's yeah. diva. She's tough. You know what? She's a lot. <laughs> she really is. She never hits her marks. <laughs> oh, my God. She's a lot. She's a lot. Well, the big bombshell of this episode is that Charles and Zane have teamed up to make a mutual comeback via Mercury. Mm -mm -mm. Charles no. has resigned from Millennials Board, and now they're in direct competition with the ladies. So... I mean, it's not really a competition. Ooh. Ooh. And fighting words. Yes, what? they are, sir. I will come back and get you on that one. Peter, what's your take on his decision to get back in the game like this? When I first read that, that part of the arc, right, that he is doing this and, and, and that he keeps it from the woman that he loves, right? And that he is dishonest about something or not completely forthright about uh, something that in this relationship with this woman where truth plays such an important role. I, at first thought, like, I thought, wow, that's so out of character for Charles, right? Because I, li I like the idea of him as a man of integrity. Mm -hmm. And then I thought, I think that I have an overdeveloped sense of, of 
consistency of character. I think if somebody had said to me 20 years ago, right, had, had written out the script of the next 20 years of my life, I would have looked at so many things, the things that actually ended up happening mm -hmm. and I ended up doing. I think I would have looked at so many things and said, my God, I would, ne I, I would never do that. That's so out of character, yep. right? But we do things that are out of character. Yeah. And, and even though we think that they don't, they don't quite fit. So this uh, is out of, the, out of my idea of Charles, but very much um, part of who he is because as he says, um, he wants to build something of his own. Um, and this is his chance. And he always and so, maintained that. He did. Yes, yes, did. yes, yes, yes. And, and, and I think that, to the, to, again, as always, to the credit of our writers, it's not a device that they now introduce in this episode. It's another stitch in a thread that they've laid, laid out for a long time over his entire arc in the show. And I, I, think it's, I love when you say to her in that scene, when you're like, you of all people, yes. I'm trying to reinvent myself here. I'm, and, and this is new to me, and you yeah. of all people, people should understand that. And you're like, ooh. He's yeah, like, yeah, oh, well, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. going there. You're going, exactly, <laughs> like, he has a point, you know? Mm, mm. <laughs> Charles Zane always lands on his feet, like a cat with nine True. lives, yeah. but somehow knocks Kelsey down, like, in the process a little bit. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I told you I was coming back for you. Oh. So, <laughs> how do you it. see their relationship? <laughs> Are they destined to destroy each other? Well, maybe in a way, like the phoenix that comes back rising from the ashes. So it's kind of a beautiful mythological thing. Oh. Yes, then the answer is yes. So wow, way to spin that around on me. So pretty. Yeah, You're gotcha. all beautiful and stuff. pretty image. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> okay, well, we have a lot more to discuss after Kelsey decides she's done with Zane. She has a tough time on dating apps. Lauren says it's because her job's too impressive. And I believe she puts it, she's got that big dick energy. Mm -hmm. BDE. BDE. It's, it's a real thing. BDE. So what do we think about that argument? The, yes. So BDE is a real thing with guys, yeah. but can women also kind of project it? And it is it a turn on or turn off to guys? I think, look, I don't think all guys are the same. I don't think all people are the same. I think for some men that would be a, a giant turn on. It just, there are a lot of people and male people who I have found get intimidated when a woman has more seems to have more power than them. And there's others who don't. A turn on for men, but a turn off for boys. Oh! oh. Yes, I wanna high five you, and that's so not like me, right. but like, get hey, out right. of here. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's true. Well, Kelsey is so stressed, her hair's literally falling out. Yeah. Diana commiserates by sharing her own list of <laughs> self-induced physical ailments. How do you it's guys- It's the perfect episode for me to direct, because it was the episode <laughs> of ailments, and I'm always like, is I have an eye and a back, and I'm in deep, well, like it's, yeah, it's a hypochondriac's dream. Ooh, but how do you deal with those ailments and then that stress in your actual life? Oh, I complain. I'm an active complainer. I'm, I'm, I think if there was an Olympic uh, category for complaining, I for sure have at least a bronze. Oh, girl, yeah. I would be in competition. The quetching you. competition? Mm -hmm. yeah. Quetching competition. <laughs> I'm a professional quetcher. I just, with the pain and the sciatica and the eyes, and it was great. I was like, oh, nutcrackers esophagus, it's a thing. <laughs> it's my, my character said I have something called nutcrackers <laughs> esophagus. <laughs> yeah, is that a thing? It's a thing. What oh, is it? everything. What is it? I mean, I would Im imagine what, I mean, this is your esophagus <laughs> and nutcracker. It seems like it would be just a bulge in here. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I also think that like when with, with ailments and like getting older, you also you also know it's a gauge of how long you've been married. Yes. When 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 you start, you can judge it by the stuff that you ask each other to get at the pharmacy. <laughs> <laughs> like, like when you start can, off. Can you get me some <laughs> blank? Like, oh my god! I just <laughs> said that. We're so old. Preparation it's, it's, for it's the so, eyes. So, <laughs> it's so yeah. It's yeah. so funny. <laughs> and then and then you're like, oh my god, this is this is so undignified. And you're like, I'll screw it. Oh, just, I'm just gonna ask. Dignity is it was, for it's, it's so great. Yeah. <laughs> can we talk about the garlic scene in Maggie's apartment? <laughs> Huh? Speaking of the pharmacy. Yeah, yeah speaking of the pharmacy. Speaking right. of ailments uh -huh. and speaking of ailments. natural remedies for natural an ailment. Remedies. Oh, that's Cedar Maggie's um, apartment. So special. Listen, so that epic. is a that is based on true stories from our writers. Really? Yes. You know what? As so well, many things are. Well, in that case, let's double take a look. Okay. Ooh, ooh. I just got a really big hit of it again. Oh, it's like a garlic knot. Yes, you guys have a garlic knot haunting your apartment. Oh my god. Or Escargot. Mm, I love escargot. People are smelling me. No, it's okay. It's natural. You know, Kelsey, about Zane, that, that's just business. 
I'm sure it's not personal. Well, then you clearly don't know Zane very well, because he's up to something. And he's not working alone, but he wants to make it seem like he is. Yeah, it is strange. Someone is clearly giving him money. I know. But who? Who is it? Seriously, who is it? It's me. I'm the garlic knot that stuck a whole clove up my pussy. It's plant medicine. <laughs> and I think it smells fine. Maggie! <laughs> <laughs> oh, you just missed the King Princess singing your pussy is God. <laughs> um, Peter, how did you not laugh during that scene, or did you laugh during that scene? I think I did okay. I mean, I, 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 I actually held, I held it together. I mean, I've taken production days like two hours over um, <laughs> with, with, with my sort of apocalyptic meltdowns. It was, I, I just, I don't know, but just by the, I summoned all my strength, um, my inner <laughs> strengths. To be fair, you know, that's a lot of people around a table, so that you need a lot of coverage for that, so that's yeah. a long... That's a long scene to shoot. And I will also say, it also takes a director who is able to strike a balance between being really in command of a set, being able to get what she needs, and being able to keep it fun for the actors. That's a really hard thing to do, and I thought you were just great. Well, that's nice. Those I, are, that's, a, that, that's, that's super hard. I also got a pizza truck. Mm. Right, <laughs> and the pizza truck. <laughs> I was going to say, yes, you're, you're how did you approach uh, the scene? But you just explained it. I got a pizza, pizza truck. Pizza I also, truck. And, yeah, exactly. I got a pizza truck. a coffee truck. Um, pizza uh, truck. Uh, yeah, no, this was the scene that I, I was really thinking about. Because you know, you're trying to tell a story. You're trying to be funny. There's another story going on that's really important that's your story. Right. You know, that's have, there are two secrets that are being kept at the same time. And one is very funny and one is not funny at all. And you're trying to balance the storytelling there where you, of course, want the funny one to be... You know, but you're trying to crisscross those and tell those stories at the same time and get everyone's coverage and, you know, it, it, so it's, it, that's a challenge. You, you're trying to strike the right balance. And, it was really know. well done. I mm -hmm. love that scene. Well, it's pretty, it's, they're also really funny. I mean, I, I had to stick in that shot of, of Debbie going, <laughs> it just made me laugh so hard that I was like, look, I must put that in at some point. But it worked because you want her to not be hearing what they're talking about, and so she's concerned, you know. But, there, but it's funny because there's, there's some scenes that I've had with Sutton and some scenes that I've had with you where you'll both do stuff, and I'll just say afterwards, and, and I'll break because it's so funny. And I just say flat, I, I say flat out, you can't do that. You just can't. You just you can't That's be. That's not the choice you can make. You can't. You can't be that funny because we won't get through the day. <laughs> <laughs> and so they have to dial it down just so that everybody can go home. Mm. So. Well, I was I was really pleased with that. I, I liked everyone's performance. I thought you. I, I loved seeing Charles, your, you know, the character of Charles playing, being able to seem relaxed and then realizing. You know, throughout this, you're very relaxed. You're so happy to like be with your girlfriend mm. and your friends, and be, you know, we don't need to talk about work. I mean, Charles is saying we don't need to talk about work. Right. You know what I mean? It's great. Mm. He's like, ah, I'm free. Also, he's trying to deflect, <laughs> but then you know, he's trying to be relaxed, Charles, and and he's realizing it doesn't go so well. he's realizing oh the implications. Yeah, exactly. Mm. And Charles, how did it feel to be talked about behind your back? I just I just so noticed zane. that. Yeah. <laughs> so zane. Thanks for you know. Not not throwing me under the bus or yeah. anything. Yeah. Hey, man. Yeah, I appreciate that. <laughs> no. It's good to know, yeah. I love you know, that Kelsey's, Kelsey's just so sure it's all yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. up to something. Right, right, right. Ooh. Yeah. But the schemer <laughs> isn't Zane. And I, wait, is the, is the line still in there? Is the line still in there about Mercury? Yeah. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. She's like her. Mercury, the god of trickery, and she's like, that's so Zane. And that's, you're, you just and know like, that it's Charles, like, that came up with that. Yeah, I with that. That, was a great, that was a great note from yeah. you. Yeah. To, 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 yeah. Like, oh, that was clearly my well, idea. Speaking of Mercury, when Liza confronts uh, Charles about Mercury, Charles explains it as a need to reinvent himself, which is probably fair given all that Liza's done for her own career. So, what are your predictions for his new competition between them and how it might affect their relationship? Relationships are complicated because people are complicated. We are, and so it, this adds another layer of complication between them, but uh, it is two adult human beings trying to work out their future and who they are and who they need to be and what uh, they feel like they need to insist on and what they're willing to let go of. And again and again and again, to the credit of our writers, they write human beings. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a, just a, it's a really fun thing to be able to, to play. I like seeing every character make a misstep, but I really like seeing Charles make mistakes because... Hmm. 
because he's so capable, you know, and thoughtful. Mm -hmm. And so it's really, it's great to get to see, you're like, yeah, yeah, we all mess up. Like we, you know, we, uh, we don't always think about the whole thing when we're in the middle of it. And that's yeah, human. Yeah. And yeah. so it's, I, I really enjoyed that. I like the same thing for Zane because you're so unflappable. Mm -hmm. To see that these two people who are, you know, really in control and unflappable, like suddenly be caught in something was, you know, mm -hmm. was fun. So also, Charles, what do you think about Zane and Kelsey? How is this going to affect their relationship? You know, I think when they're together, like in, in a relationship, then, you know, it's kind of like, Often. I forget what the type of fish is, but when they transport them, mm -hmm. like on the train or something, that when, by the time they get to the destination, the fish have, the fish have like atrophied. So like, they're weaker because uh -huh. they're just, you they're know. Floating. Floating around, so they put catfish in the tank to scare them, so they have to like keep swimming and they stay stronger. Um, and I, I need a catfish. That's Zane. <laughs> All right, yeah, that's You're Zane. You're a catfish. He's a catfish. I need a catfish to sit with me on the couch. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm just gonna atrophy. I know. Those things are gonna atrophy. I've not enough catfish in my just life. Just a catfish it's next to me, catfish. like, hey. What's that for catfish? Well, as catfishy yeah. as Zane can be, you also had an amazing moment in the first episode of the season where you kind of give Kelsey the heads up about Diana possibly yeah. leaving. I love it. Yeah. When you call me the Best person. Yeah, in she's the yeah best best marketer, marketing yeah, marketing director we ever worked, yeah. worked with. Yeah, um, you're really Zane. leaning in for the women. That was an amazing moment for Zane. Yeah, I don't. It's it's not anything about gender. It's just about you know um, what's best, and Diana is the best, and so he recognizes you that. Heard it he has here. no problem recognizing yes. you know someone's greatness and potential. Oh, if he had yes. to pick, would he pick his career or Kelsey? That's not mm -hmm. even a question. He'd pick his career. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like he deep down inside. Oh, yeah, really? What gives you that? What gives you that idea? Just the fact that I'm a super fan and I want you guys to be together forever and ever. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you probably, you probably like chase. What about those. the fact that you said you loved her? Oh yeah, in the past tense though. Yeah, I'm just saying. Whatever, I'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. No, it's I mean, a what's interesting about this episode is like Kelsey was really angry with you about you taking Audrey Colbert, but the betrayal of Charles is unthinkable, uh -huh. you know? So that's when they're combined. Yeah, but that's why, that's why it's like she's, she's got to toughen up because that's the reality of the world. And that's why I like, you know, the fact that iron sharpens iron. So Zane's like driving her. So it's a friendly competition, at least like within two people who care about each other. And, you know, she's going to have to watch out for people. It sucks that she has to watch out for the people who are kind yeah, of Yeah, exactly. Like I was like, no, I don't her. think that's really how she's seeing it. It's full of George Clooney. You never know. Oh, find your Amal. Yeah. Oh, who was Kelsey? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Amal is. Yeah, yeah. Amal. <laughs> <laughs> that one of the lines. I have a line like that. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah. my yeah. line. Amal is Amal. Yeah, but she's Amal. <laughs> okay, guys, it's game time. Oh, boy. Right. We're playing oh, a little Would You Rather. Okay. okay, so, well, whatever happens, it's clear that Charles would rather get into risky business than be Liza's stay at home bay. So now let's find out what kind of choices you guys would make with a round of would you rather. So real life would you rather. Okay. Would you rather have to wear one of Diana's statement necklaces all the time oh. or have Lauren follow you around posting everything you do on social media? Oh my Next. God. Statement necklace. I would kill Lauren. <laughs> and then you'd never go to jail. But I, just... I love yeah. those necklaces. Okay. I yeah, still you think love about... them having never worn them. So yeah. I know what it means to wear mm. the necklace. And I still say wear the necklace. <laughs> <laughs> not, 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 not anything easy. against Lauren and everything yeah. against social yeah. media. I just need some personal time. Privacy. And privacy. Privacy. Yeah, privacy. Privacy. Privacy, yeah. privacy <laughs> okay. wins. Yeah. Uh, become a huge success by ruining your significant other's career. Oh, God. Or be Diana Trout's assistant for the rest of your life. Diana Trout's assistant. Oh, I was going to say ruin the... <laughs> there we have it. Which one of us isn't married <laughs> to someone who might watch this program? <laughs> I didn't even need to hear the other one. I was like, number one. <laughs> Sold. <laughs> well, I, I definitely would rather do that. Uh, yeah, but okay, I got outvoted. Two against one. Be painted by Maggie or tattooed by Josh. Painted. painted. Are you kidding me? Oh, wow. That's not even a... Painted. Question. Yeah, exactly. Which one is a thousand needles going into your skin? <laughs> exactly. Which one is a painting? <laughs> yeah. Right? We're okay. not gluttons for punishment. No. Have to perform a cabaret act at every social function you attend, or only be able to express your feelings through show tunes. I would pick the first I think so. and yeah. go to even fewer social yeah. functions I mean, than, I, go that, that I, than I go to already. I never <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, ah, sorry. I never go out. Mm, because sometimes, you know, show tunes aren't enough. I'm sorry, Broadway. <laughs> 
Sorry. You just said that. Sometimes show tunes aren't enough. Okay, would you rather always have to carry a pork chop in your pocket <laughs> or always smell like garlic? Carry the oh. pork chop. Carry the pork chop. Snack. It's fantastic. I don't eat meat. Like a small pork chop. Like a little, like a miniature pork chop. I okay. guess you could always you could, but Always. Like is the, it the same, same pork chop? Yeah. <laughs> is it the same pork chop or you like overcome it? Because right? garlic's going to smell better you than that at some pork, point. Like fresh ones in. Fresh new pork fresh chops. Fresh snacks. Yes. And you right. always got a snack. Then you yeah. eat, but then you always either smell like garlic or smell like a pork chop. So. No, but can you wrap the pork chop up in saran wrap? You can do, yeah, no. it's pork. just in your, no, no, yeah, but hold on. It just has pockets, so you can have like a pork chop proof pocket. That's true. Well, now we're right? getting, here's the that thing. You guys want to smell like a pork bucket, chop, you want to smell like garlic. But you won't smell like pork chop if you have the pork chop pants. Please. Pork chop pants. <laughs> pork Get to our pork chop pants. pants. Jason Bennett. Oh, my God, I'm so hungry right now. Here, bro, have a pork, pork chop. chop. Pork oh. chop pants. Oh, oh man, you got pork chop pants? Uh, <laughs> 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 Are the pork chop pants? You got pork chop in there right now? <laughs> yeah, lemon pepper. Oh, bro. <laughs> I'm so glad I invited you to this function. Now sing a show tune. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's perfect. Okay. That's perfect. Would you rather wear Pearl the advice giving dogs Merkin on your face or have your private parts burning from jalapeno dip? Merkin. So pube wig on your face or burning privies? For, you know, just a weekend. <laughs> yeah, I think I'd go with the pube wig. I'd I go think with so the wig too. Yeah. You, can, you could accessorize anything. <laughs> I mean, I'm I you could. You could. Could. You'd already have the necklace. Exactly. I don't, so. want, for you, it's I don't like, like the burning. Yeah, no, that's no. Yeah. burning sensation. Not so oh, much. Like. Mm -hmm. Not so much. Yeah. Before we wrap things up, could each of you please give me one word to describe next week's episode? Go. Superb. Superb. Public urination. It's two words, but hyphenated. It works. Hashtag public urination. <laughs> Spank. <laughs> and there you have it. Thank you guys so much for joining me. If you don't want to watch next week's episode so, after that, then what kind of a viewer are you? Superb public urination it's spank. Superb, <laughs> it's superb, it's superb public, public urination spank. So many different things. Yeah. Exactly. Thank you. Thanks. You guys I are all over again. too much. I can't. I'm like sweating <laughs> and crying and laughing. And thank you, younger fans, for watching and sharing your comments. I'm Taylor Strecker, and this is Getting Younger. Join me again right here, right after next week's episode, for more behind the scenes stories and insights from the cast. Until then, here's a sneak peek of what's to come. Can I give you cowgirls some pointers? I'm the resident expert. <laughs> okay. Step one, a firm grip. <clears throat> I think we've got it covered. We have a lot of rage. I see that. L leave you to it. <clears throat> you know, if only Charles was that easy to beat. He's buying every book that we want. It's not my fault that he got ousted from his own company. It's like he has a vendetta against me. He wants to see me fail. And the person who I need the most is sleeping with the enemy. You gotta get a handle on this, Kels. Because Liza and Charles dating and her working with us, that is not compatible. Do you think that she's actually helping him land these authors? Maybe not consciously, but as publisher, you deserve to know where her loyalties lie. She has to choose. Yeah! Subscribe to Younger Uncovered. The podcast dedicated to all things younger.